Hey guys, welcome back to Tracy's Place. I am here with a mukbang, and as you see, it is Panera. I have not been to Panera in a long time, so I'm excited about this mukbang. I love Panera, but for some reason, you know, I see it all the time, I pass by it all the time, but for some reason, I just don't go often. And they're not super, super expensive. They're somewhat on the pricey side for like if you're just having a regular lunch, but you know, it's not too bad, but anyway, let me say my grace. God is great and God is good. Lord, I thank you for this food. Bless this food and drink, make it nourishing and not harmful in the name of Jesus. I pray that you bless everyone who is with me watching, Lord. Bless them with a special blessing and bless them to know that you love them and that I do too. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. I'm going to tell you what I have. I have a roasted turkey avocado BLT. So, it has this um, country style bread. It has roasted turkey, avocado, tomato, bacon, um, lettuce, and I don't know if it has onion. That would have been good. I don't think it has onion. Um, but anyway, they have like this uh, cilantro type. I don't get mayo on my sandwiches. I don't eat mayo. Um, so, they had this cilantro type sauce that they had for another sandwich and I asked her to give me a side of it because I wanted something on there. So I put that on here and on this half, I put the, um, y'all know my favorite, this Panera Fuji apple dressing. So I have that and then it came with a side of chips. A baguette came with the cup of French onion soup. Yes, French style onion soup plenty. <laughs> So anyway, I'm excited. I have orange Kool-Aid mixed with a, just a little bit of apple juice. Y'all know I'm a little different mixing stuff. So, and, but it tastes good. Um, just put a splash of it in after I poured the orange Kool-Aid. And I tasted it and it is good. So I'm about to get started. About to get started. So what have you all been up to? It's been a while since I've done a mukbang. I haven't, I don't do them as often because I have some other ones, other videos to do that people like. Mmm. Mmm. I know not everybody likes avocado. Avocado, I think, just has to be put with something. And it's good on this sandwich. Mmm. 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 Then with the salty potato chips, that's good. This is good, y'all. Mmm, 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 mmm. Delicious. I wonder what that Fuji apple dressing is going to taste like on that other one. Mmm. Delicious. Okay, so what have you all been up to? Have you all been, you know, doing anything new for the summer? Have you went anywhere? I have finally been able to work a budget pretty decent for what we want to do for the rest of the summer. Okay, so I finally got Isaiah into the camp, as you all know. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh my, okay. Let me. Ooh. This is a spoon I dipped the cilantro with y'all. So it's, it's all right. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the soup. For some reason, I was very surprised about this. Panera didn't have the croutons. For the soup. And she's like, Mom, we do not have the croutons for the... I'm like, you don't have the croutons. <laughs> How you gonna have French onion soup? So, um, anyway, I didn't make a fuss or anything. They gave me my cheese and all that stuff. I was just real surprised that Panera wasn't totally on it. But, um, anyway, when I got home, I just sliced a real thin thing of the baguette. And I put a lot of pieces around on the top, melted the cheese... 
remelted it in the you know in the microwave and everything. It's delicious. It's delicious. I, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. That's good. Panera has a classic, just clean taste. So good. Let me go on to what I was talking about. Anyway, I've been budgeting. Um, so, Isaiah got him into a camp. He used, The job didn't come through. The job never came through, you all. We thought we had something. We knew somebody who worked at a certain place, and they were supposed to be getting him on because you all know he's 14 years old. And it's hard for a 14-year-old to secure a job. A lot of the times they don't have too many 14 year olds working so that didn't come through so we got him into a camp for the well for six weeks because it had started beginning of June but I didn't get him in at that time because I was hoping he was going to get a job anyway we were able to get him into a camp um, until it runs till 3 in the afternoon, so that gives me plenty of time to do stuff that I need to do. and gives him time to get out that 14-year-old energy <laughs> and everything. Oh, me him. Oh, Lord Jesus. I just love him. I do. <laughs> so, he was supposed to be going. We wanted him to go on the trip with our church. Our youth go on a trip every year. But band camp. We had to pay for band camp. And, you know, this camp was an expense too. And, and then we had other things. So you had to do what you have to do. So he missed the trip for church. This year, we're going to have to start, you know, saving up some, do some extra saving. You know that envelope saving. Oh, I'm spilling stuff. We're going to do that envelope system with some stuff. Come on here now. Don't act up. I'm on camera. <laughs> so we're going to do that envelope system and get him on that trip. Because he's gone, um, I think, twice with the youth. Mm. from my church and it's a good thing to do you know they go fun places when they go on the trip and he's with all the youth and so anyway we're gonna get him there next year so anyway being so I had to budget everything out and kind of allocate some stuff here and there I got our vacation plan I am excited about that because we didn't know if we were going this year. But we are going for a vacation. So that video will be coming up. Um, it'll be coming up. Y'all see it when it comes out. But oh my goodness. There's somewhere we've been wanting to go. <laughs> so my husband was like, mm -mm, just, just go on. Because the kids are getting older. This is the only thing I don't like about this French onion soup. It's that stringy cheese. But it tastes so good. So anyway, my husband was like, you know, I know some people say don't do anything when you're trying to, you know, um, like pay off your debt and different things like that. Um, like Dave Ramsey and stuff. But I'm kind of, I, I believe in that. But I also believe you don't know what's going to happen between, you know, in years to come. And you want to enjoy your family and stuff and people around you. So I kind of think it's good to do both. You you budget, you try to, you know, keep a tight budget as much as you can. But I think you should have some fun too and enjoy yourself and the people around you just because tomorrow's not promised for anyone. And that's the only reason why, you know, I say that. So but anyway, we're going on vacation. So I'm about to start planning that and everything. And because, you know, they have different packages or either um, things that, you can do around the resort and stuff like that for the kids and stuff. And our kids are not little, a 14 year old and a 20 year old. But in, in, in a short amount of time, Jalen's not going to be traveling with us anymore, most likely. And 
Isaiah will be older and there's stuff that he this just won't be fun for him to do. He's probably not going to be wanting to go on a vacation with mama and daddy, just him alone. So when he gets like maybe 16 or whatever and Jalen's not going, then we will most likely let him invite a friend. And we'll just pay for the friend to go. Mm-hmm. You know, close friend. I you know, mean, just any school friend or something like that. Not that anything's wrong with that, but when you go on a vacation and you're in the hotel room and, you know, all this, that, and the other, you just want somebody you're used to. Mm. For the most part and everything, so. Yeah. Come on, come on. Mm. That's still real hot. So, that means also, you know, I keep the house clean all the time anyway. But I like, when I, I can't say it's just when I go on vacation. I'm just kind of, I like my house to be clean regardless. So, is that my my kids? I was like, Mama, you, you our house is clean, you know. Da, 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 da. And I'd be like, Pick up this. Don't leave this here. Don't just leave your shoes there. Don't do that. You know, da. I you know some people say they like to have a well lived in house. Yeah, I want it to feel like home, but I don't want it to be a messy place where I don't feel at home. And. I like a clean place, and I don't. I don't want when people come over and popping up on surprise to find a messy place either. And some people be like, "Well, I don't care. They just have to see." Well, I care. That's just me. Everybody's different. I don't. If somebody else doesn't mind or whatever, I am fine with that. I ain't gonna be talking about people or nothing. But for me. I like a clean house, period, just for myself, just for being comfortable, just for comfort's sake. And the woman, y'all know, biblically anyway, um, I, I know not everybody goes with that lifestyle, but for those of you who do, you know and understand. And um, I think it's Titus. Anyway, it says that the woman is the keeper of the home. Uh, how many of you all know when folks come over or you go somewhere else, you don't say nothing about that husband keep a nasty house. Or the kids, the little two-year-old or the ten-year-old or whatever. Oh, they sure got a mess. Mm -mm. It would be, you know, if it was here, you know, you, well, I'd give another person that because I'm not nasty. <laughs> but, you know, oh, Michelle or oh, Nancy. I'll say Nancy. Nancy sure do keep a nasty house. It ain't going to be just junky. It's going to be nasty. That's what people say. And they say, the woman, because I don't care. Sometimes, even if you ain't, um, have not been raised biblically or going by those standards, people still say, it's the woman's house. She keeps the house. And, you know, she could work and do equal things as long with her husband, but they're still not going to say that husband keeps a nasty house. It's going to be that woman that keeps a nasty or junky house. So, yeah. That's not going to be said too often about me. And not at all, if I can help him. So, before we go on vacation, we're going to give a good old cleaner. But I do that, I mean, even if I'm just going shopping, if I'm going just out for the day or whatever, I try to straighten up, clean up. And I don't like, just sometimes dishes is going to be there in the sink. But I don't like that. But I want the house to be clean. Before I leave, going out somewhere, um, like I said, I just like it clean too. Even when I'm here, just around the house. But when you leave and you like gone for the day, or you're gone for the weekend, or on a long trip, when I come home, I do not want to feel like, oh my god, man, I gotta clean up too. You know, you come home, you trying to put your things up, you're trying to put your um, you know, you put your dirty clothes downstairs and we do that, try to do that right away. 
soon as we come in, put our dirty clothes in the um, um, laundry room, and we leave our open our suitcases downstairs and let them air out for 24 hours, and then we put those away. But so we try to get everything put up if we can, and then take a shower or whatever and go to bed depending on what time of day we usually get home at night for some reason but um because i'll be trying to stay where we are as long as we <laughs> as long as we can stay i love coming home and a lot of people will be like i got to get home you know da, 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 da. i like being away i love my house i love my home but home is wherever my family is so if i'm in timbuktu if i'm in the bahamas if i'm in england if i'm in uh, niagara falls California, you know, wherever. I'm with my family. I'm at home. That's the way I feel. My husband felt bad one time and I went to visit my son and daughter-in-law and granddaughter. And when I got home, I was so, I was so ready to see my husband and Isaiah. I think Jalen was already going to college. I was so ready to see them. But I was kind of sad, too, because I was going to, you know, miss my son and daughter-in-law and everything and my granddaughter. But I was so spoiled when I was there. Oh, my goodness. I didn't have to cook or clean or do anything. <laughs> I was on vacation. I was there to visit them and, and to see my daughter, daughter-in-law's son, of course, but... It was just a joy to see my granddaughter. Just a joy. And, you know, like when people come to my house, I don't have them doing stuff either. So, anyway, my son and daughter-in-law spoiled me when I was out there. And, I, oh, it was just wonderful. I loved them so much. But, anyway, it was just wonderful. When I came home, I was like, I got to cook. I got to clean. I got to do this. It was just like back to reality. Y'all know what I mean? Back to reality. So... <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Delicious. You all, I have not watched the news a whole bunch lately at all, but I have caught a couple stories. And one would be mm, excuse me. I don't know if I can eat all this. That's a shot. The product tampering. Did you all see, and I know most of you all have, unless there's a lot of you that just don't watch the news because it depresses you or whatever. And sometimes for those reasons, I, it's, I'm not, I don't get depressed, but it's sad sometimes. Um, mm -mm. I hadn't really watched the news in a good five days. So, just glimpses here and there. I'm sitting at the table, we see it on, you know, but um, the product tampering, how, how, dis how disgusting. Um, oh my goodness, y'all, I, yeah, I don't even know where to start with that. I don't know where to start with that. In what conscience do you go into a public place, into a grocery store, Cameras are everywhere. Now, this kind of almost goes to show you that people may not be manning those cameras right away because if somebody gets out the door after doing something, you know, if you're watching the camera, you should be able to bah, 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 alert somebody as people come running down the aisle to get you. I think, like, people must not be watching the cameras, you know. I think they record, but I don't think there's too many people just sitting watching cameras. Because you would not have to look for these people. They talk about they have to find these people, you know, this and that and the other. Well, you all need to have people manning your cameras like 24 hours. Um, anyway, a girl took an ice cream container out of the freezer section in the grocery store, opened it. It didn't have, as I'm un un assuming, didn't have um, a clear... Uh, protective, uh, I forget what you call them, slipped my mind, a seal on there to keep somebody from taking it off. She takes the top off, licks the ice cream, mm, excuse me, and puts it back in the freezer. 
There was another boy, young man. I don't like to say young man because a man, you know, don't wouldn't do things like that. But I, I will say a boy. Took some mouthwash. Now, mouthwash usually has a seal on it. So I'm thinking he probably, before they his little friend or whoever taped it, started rolling, he probably took the tape off. And he took a swig of mouthwash, spit it back in the mouthwash bottle, and put it back on the shelf. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Mm, 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 mm. Now, see. Mm. That's real good with that apple dressing. That is good. That's delicious, too. <laughs> but, you know, what's going on? What is going on with people nowadays? It's so sad. It's so unfortunate and it's so sad. And for some reason, you know, I know a lot of people won't agree with me. But there was a time, and you should be learning these values at home. You should. But if, for some reason, back in the day, if mama was a working mom for some reason, and she couldn't get you to church, because sometimes mama was sleeping in on Sunday morning because she had to work. Maybe she was a single mom or something. And she used Sunday to sleep in, and she took the kids to Sunday school and church. She didn't go, but she took them. And if, I don't mean to offend anybody. I believe that it's good for everyone to go because um, you learn values there. You learn values at church and just from even just reading your word. I know some people, you know, don't go, and but they've been trained. But some people just don't go, period. And there's some people who haven't even been trained in a Christian household or and I'm not talking about other religions or anything like that, so I'm just going to stick to, you know, mine. Um, some people have been trained that way, but for some reason they don't go to church anymore, but they still carry out their Christian values and things like that. But there are some who have not gone at all, and they think, and some people will say, well, people can be good without um, going to church, and everything and that's true I'm not saying people can't be good and I'm not going into salvation and different things like that but you from the Bible and going to church you learn some moral values um, for the most part you learn good moral values and <laughs> you learn good moral values and you should be raised with them. But the difference is just with good people and, you know, people that go to church or believe in God or whatever is that you believe that you're accountable to someone. Agnostics. Okay, I won't go there. Atheists. Um, and people who don't go by biblical principles or whatever. They don't feel that they have anybody to be accountable to. They just believe that you die. Most people believe that don't believe in God. They believe that you just die and you're done with. But, you know, most of them, most people know that there is something after this. And there is a God that created all this. You do have to be accountable for the things you do here. And I'm like, I, that, and that to me is the breakdown in society today. Is that there are so many people who don't go to any kind of religious service or anything. And, and nowadays, parents are letting children do whatever they want to do. So they're not getting a lot of moral and values training at home because their parents are off the hook themselves. So I believe the breakdown in society is due to Back years ago, okay, this was mostly a Christian country, founded on biblical principles, whatever you want to say, um, and mostly on a Sunday morning, most people was at some kind of church. I don't care if it was Methodist, Baptist, 
Pentecostal, holiness, non-denomination, Catholic, you know, whatever they were learning morals and values and salvation type principles and how to live a good life and how to treat others nice and blah, blah, blah. Nowadays, I believe that that is why society is like it is. And then there's not a lot of fathers in the home. There's a lot of, there's a myriad of reasons, but I believe now people nowadays don't believe they have anybody to be accountable to. And I think that's the main break now. Yeah. And getting off that subject, hopping on to another. Talk, speaking about vacation. Apparently, Disneyland, Disney World, you can't even be safe at the most happiest place on earth. I won't say you can't be safe. You can be safe. But did you all see the fight on, and I did catch that, the fight at Disneyland. Apparently, that they, they were saying that this was a family itself or either friends or people that do know each other. But they got into, oh my God. Goodness, I could hardly watch it. I just wanted to. That just, it was so sad. I could almost cry just from people having to see stuff like that. And not just them, because there was a, a, some people, was last, two, about two weeks ago, that those group of parents that had that softball fight or baseball fight at the Little League game. The parents were off the hook, you all. It's just shameful. But this, at Disneyland and Toontown? Y'all, that's sad. Oh, my avocado. It's sad. It's sad. It's shameful. And that just goes to show. And then they just cussing up a storm. Why do people, so many people cuss nowadays? I mean, I know, you know, some people fly off with little words here and there. It's usually, I won't even say when it's usually, but, you know, sometimes you're angry about something or whatever and, you know. That things happen, but just all out in public, and they were just be this and in that, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And then I'm guessing it was the matriarch or I don't know mother grandmother of the family or one of the elder people in the group because she was on the motor scooter I'm thinking she was getting up to tell him to stop or whatever she got hit and fell down on the ground and the guy in the bright pink shirt or whatever he was hitting the women just hitting the women the babies was crying people were watching in disbelief it was crazy now, I know you probably seen but if not Oh my goodness. I hate to even say go watch because I don't want to perpetuate things like that, but it was awful. It was awful. So, I believe that it's the music that we allow. Um, you know, there's freedom of speech and everything, but I don't think everything, I don't think everything should be lawfully or should be done lawfully. All of that in the rap music, and it's mostly in the rap music. It's not all of it, but it's mostly to me in the rap music. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Um, I don't know about heavy metal and hard rock. It might be in that too. I don't listen to that. But I know it's some other stuff is probably, you know, probably in. But I know it's in that hardcore rap. And the thing is, it's so prevalent nowadays. And our young people are listening to it. And it's hard to monitor, even if you don't raise your children like that, it's hard to monitor nowadays because they got these smartphones and the computers and they can pull up stuff on their school computers too. So it's just sad. It is sad. Mm, mm, mm. So people, please get back to Telling your children and even some of your children's friends. Sometimes when they're in your house, sometimes 
I wouldn't say you have to preach to them or nothing like that. You don't want to push folks away, but in some kind of way, share some goodness or share a word with them some kind of way. Encourage them to be good citizens, or good people at school, and just day to day. Day to day. And speaking about that, okay, that leads me to my next thing. <laughs> and this is kind of a, I don't know what everybody would think about this, but just speaking about being a good citizen, just being nice, mm, I'm sorry, just being nice to people. Okay, my husband made the comment that the other day, he said, you know, our, our, our neighbor has a new little friend, uh, his significant other. Okay, so the male is the person that owns the home or is the, you know, the homeowner. So she has come to live with him. So anyway, my husband said he was outside and she came out the door and he was like, hey, how you doing? And um, she, he said she just dropped her head and went on to her car. And he was like, I, my, my husband's voice is loud. So when he says hi to you, you know he's saying hi to you. <laughs> But he said she was looking at him and she just dropped her head and kept walking. He was like, but I can resonate with that because that has happened to me so many times. And other people have said it too. What do you all think, excuse me, about this? Okay, I, I have been, it's been a myriad of places. I mean, over the years, churches from years ago and not long ago. And uh, um, you could be... Um, it could be some of your husband's acquaintances or your spouse's acquaintances um, at work or your neighbors, even, as I just said. Do you think spouses or significant others are telling their husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, to not speak? They better not speak to the opposite sex. Have you ever noticed that with the opposite sex sometimes and they'll be talking so I don't know if it's a thing of they'll say you know don't be talking to a certain kind of female um, because I've I don't even know how to say this <laughs> but I, I'll notice that men will when this happens men will be speaking to different people and you know yakking it up and then when they some of them, a couple of them have seen me. It's like they kind of shy away or they, you know, act like they don't see you. And now I'm not talking about a whole bunch of people. But I've just noticed over the years that this happens. And I'm like, goodness, have I done something to you? Did I say something mean to you? Did I see, you thought I saw you one day and I didn't speak? And, you know, <laughs> it just, it, I'm like, oh my goodness. But then other people, you know, be saying that, People tell their spouses and the girlfriend, the boyfriend, whatever, don't talk to the opposite sex. And if they are nice looking or whatever, you better not say anything. And I'm like, oh, how sad. And that just doesn't speak to whether you're a Christian or not. I mean, Christians and non-Christians do this. That's just not good character. Just to, if you see somebody and they speak to you, you could be, I mean, right behind that person they was just jollying it up with and... Uh, they know you, so it's not like they shouldn't speak or nothing. You go to speak, and, and I mean, they turn their hand, and they act like a... F I'm like, oh, my goodness. Is it that deep? Is it that deep? So if you have a spouse that has, or, you know, that has told you that, you know, not to speak to, the opposite sex, that's control. That's control and it's insecurity. And you shouldn't have to put up with that. Because that puts you on guard all the time. And I know some people have had problems with um, controlling their eyes or with lust and different things like that. I understand that, but this doesn't always seem to be the case. 
um, this kind of seems like almost a controlled thing that another, uh, their spouse or something has told them not to do this or not to speak to certain people. And because I hear, I hear about it and it's happened to me over the years because I, I try, you know, I just brush it off and I just be like, mm, okay, <laughs> but that is, that's, that's control and it's bad self-esteem on the spouse's part to do that. It's, that's not, that's not right. Not right. So anyway, I love you guys. And uh, this Panera was so good. I'm not going to finish it all. Um, they're not going to throw it away. My husband, I could save a little bit. And I could have it for lunch the next day along with something else. My husband's like, you going to get that? And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> I still have a little bit over half of the soup left. Got this baguette. This little sandwich. Yeah. I'm going to save this. And if you have enjoyed this video, please share me. Share me on your other social media or tell somebody about me. I would love to have them as a subscriber. If you're new here, please subscribe to this channel and come back. Hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a video, you'll be notified. And I don't just do mukbangs. I do hauls and... Um, just diff different types of videos. So you can go in my video section and just look and see what, what kind of videos I make. And come back and join me. Come back and join me. All right. Love you all. Have a blessed day. And I will see you guys right back here on Tracy's Place. Bye.